Welcome to Tuttle Talk on 1190 AM. Now, live in studio, your host, local real estate expert, Andy Tuttle. Good morning and welcome to Tuttle Talk on the Real Estate Radio Network, where we teach you what the rich and the banks do, not what they tell you to do. And we dispel the myth conceptions about financial fitness and the local real estate market and show you how following some basic principles really can free you up to focus on the other important areas of your life, like your friends, your family, and the community. It's the most important hour of radio every Saturday right here on Clear Channel 1190 AM KFXR in the great state of Texas. Remember, we're the only state that can secede. So remember that and be jealous, other states. I am your host, Andy Tuttle. Thank you for joining me. You can reach out to us or after the show. You can reach out to us during or after the show on my off-air number. That's 214-736-9696, 214-736-9696, or email me at questions at andytuttle.com. You can also become a fan of the show. We'd love that at facebook.com forward slash Tuttle Talk. You'll get updates throughout the week about what we're talking about uh, from financial fitness all the way through real estate and some fun stuff that we do. Uh, and don't forget, you can listen at uh, dfw1190am.com or on your iHeartRadio app. That's great for all kinds of shows. I listen to all kinds of stuff on there. Put it on your phone, your iPad, whatever you got, your smartphone, and uh, tune in that way as well. We're always doing new stuff. So bring out your phones. I tell you this every week. 72727. So pick out your phones and dial 72727 and then type in The comment section, Andy T, A-N-D-Y-T, no spaces, to 72727, and you'll be entered in to win a brand new iPad. Don't don't delay. Don't wait on that. You're going to love that. And we love doing those kind of things for you. Now, today with me in studio, it's been a few weeks. So happy to have our good friend and owner of Texas Community Insurance, John Allen. We send all of our clients over to him for at least a discussion, and you help so many of them. You help my own insurance, and I'm so appreciative of that, not only with uh, the great premiums that you offer, but more importantly, the proper coverage in case something goes wrong, which I always appreciate how you take care of me and the feedback we get from our clients. So, John Allen, thanks for being here, buddy. Good. Glad to be back. Good. And obviously, uh, we're going to have back uh, the great, the uh, not the late, that would be weird. <laughs> Mr. Randy Nichols. It's a little early. It's a little early yeah. to be late. Um, the, from Spectrum <laughs> Financial Managing Partner, uh, Randy Nichols, thanks as always for being here, buddy. Thank you, sir. Always got good wisdom. Always got good nuggets. I don't know how you do it. I don't know if you make this stuff up or not, but it, all, it, is, it is good. And it seems to be working for me. So whatever you're telling is working for me and uh, my clients. So, great, great endorsement. <laughs> yeah, isn't that a great endorsement? Oh, That's what you get for being on this show. <laughs> Those good. kind of powerful. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. But <laughs> when he does like, it in the Bill Murray voice, be scared. I wish you could do a Bill Murray voice. That would be awesome. Okay, so hot topics right now, pretty obvious, right? The election's coming up. Politics are uh, big on everybody's mind. hear all about it on Facebook, see all about it everywhere you go. You know, one of the things, early voting started in most places on Tuesday, uh, this past Tuesday, and I cannot just encourage you enough to get out and vote, V-O-T-E, don't think that I'm in a red state, I don't need to vote, no, you should vote. No matter who you're voting for, you got to get out there and exercise that right. Most of the world doesn't even have that right. Take advantage of it. Extra, it's a great discipline one to do because it's not necessarily uh, the easiest thing in the world. It's not super difficult. But sometimes you got to wait in line. You got to take time out of your day. What a great way to get some discipline. But also, it's just an awesome opportunity and something you should take advantage of that we have in this country. John, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Did you vote already? I have not voted. I'm going to wait for the fun of standing in line. Okay, perfect. Good. Yeah, that's what I like to do. I love that's, wasting my day. You feel the experience that way. That's oh, man, why. you know, you just can't get If you go too early, <laughs> nobody's there. No, it's so, tomorrow. I'm going to vote tomorrow. Okay. Absolutely. I'm going to put that down. I'm going to check you on. I'm going to call you, accountability partner. I'm going to see if you voted. Collin County College. Okay. All right. I'm writing this, I'm writing this down. That's what I do. 7 a.m. to 7 p. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've got this figured out. I, I love have. That. All right. Good. Well, I uh, did, you guys watch, did you guys watch the debates? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, I got I got to see. I saw all of them live except the last one. I had to go watch that back on YouTube because because I was at an event. But uh, I got to say, so if I was going to give uh, my recap, first of eight, pretty clearly everyone saw it. I mean, Romney, he crushed it. He was very on top of it. Obama was weak. He got lambasted in the media for him, shook him up, woke him up. Sorry. The second one, the one with, uh, and I think, John, you were now we're talking about this, in the VP uh, debates – uh, with Ryan and uh, Biden, it was it was interesting to me, and I didn't really realize it until you talked about it. But the, most of the media 
they really did just focus in on really Biden's reaction. Yeah, you, you know, here, it's funny because I, I tend to lock in on what the issues are, and I don't necessarily see the theater of it. So, you know, I'm watching the debate, listening to what each side's saying, and I didn't even notice that Biden was being as as Biden, I guess, as he was, right? right. Maybe for a lack of a better word about it. I didn't really see that. My wife saw it right away. And then probably 90 percent of the commentary afterwards was about how he reacted to questions and kind of the way he was behaving. Nothing to do whatsoever with the, with the substance, which was a little bit scary if that's 90 percent of the takeaway or whatever it was. That, that's a that, you know, what did he say and what was he reacting to is what I would have liked. That's to a heard. very good point. Randy? Well, you recall last week when we talked, I said that uh, the public votes based on 80 percent of their observation of what a person is body language and tonality. That's where most people get their results from. So what yeah. happened was is that 80 percent, you said 90 percent, 80 percent of the public was probably sitting there watching that and they get they get their cues from what they see instead of what they hear. That's right. And that's communication anyway. 80 percent is body language. Right? right. So right. it makes sense. But at the same time, like you say, it is nice when you have a debrief. That's kind of what the media and journalism is supposed to do is kind of say, OK, look, we understand that part of it. Now let's break down the content right. for you so that you can break away without that <laughs> emotional piece in there. But of course, they're just like us. It really doesn't. You know, they're like, OK, well, no, I'm, let's talk about all his reactions and how he was rolling his eyes when Paul Ryan was talking about this subject. Right. So then you, that so that was an interesting debate. Those typically don't sway as much. No, it's just no, unless no. they're just absolutely awful, like right. Sarah Palin was absolutely awful. Yeah. And that killed the Republican ticket. For them, it didn't kill it. It was just it, did, it definitely did damage. Went a long way. Yeah, it went a long way. But the, then the third debate, Romney was consistent. He was very good. I think he was as good as he was in the first debate. A lot of people say Obama won that, but that's because Obama won. He sucked the dog. They 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 they, they sick the dogs on him with Biden, and which was good. And then Obama came out, and he was very good that third debate. He was on point. He was not lackadaisical in his approach, right. which I enjoy. That I like good debate. I know some people get so annoyed with it. Oh my god, they were like they were going to blows. But I, I kind of enjoy that because they. They are passionate about it. They were able to talk to questions of the, uh, the 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 town hall format is great. But I think I don't know if I like the actual debate or the Saturday Night Live version of the debate better. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, they do the real questions most of the time. They'll just for kind of they'll just tweak them just a little bit, and you realize how ridiculous some of these questions are. But I thought the third debate really a Romney one still. But a lot of people think oh, Biden won. John, who do you think oh, won? Oh, Biden. Oh, Biden? Oh, well, I, I, I think Joe Biden won. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> hey, that kind of works. Well, I made up a word last, last week, too. Last week was Romney Care. Romney Care. Now this week is Joe Biden. You got Biden, a good yeah. deal going. I'm, I'm making it happen, man. Yeah. I make it, write this stuff down. Take I, notes, guys. I, I think I who won debate number two of the presidential debates, I think, is a function of where you sit on you know, what your perspective is. Yeah, you hear both right sides. I, I heard somebody comment that in the third of the three presidential debates that they felt like the Democratic side was more – strongly uh, positive about the outcome of the, of the debate than the Republican was side was, and therefore they felt like that pendulum probably rested more towards the Democratic side. But I think people hear what they want to out of that. Um, I think these things are theater regardless of how you slice it. Um, there's Fair a enough. lot of positioning and posturing and, you know, I mean, think about it in your own life. When you're making a sales presentation, the first time you do it, there's elements that are that are good. And by the fifth time you do it, you've cleaned some things up and maybe it's slightly different than the first time. And I think that's what we're seeing on a national stage. Yeah, I know I agree with you, and they've really figured out how to make that that theater big. And unfortunately, some of the times, and we've discussed it, it does distract from the issues and what your candidate really does stand for, because that is what's going to to matter to you at the end of the day. Right. You know uh, where you stand and what these. Whatever candidate you choose, which one really aligns with what you think is best for the country and for yourself, not just all, John, like you say, the theater. I'll tell you this. I, I said this last week, too. Who did stop putting so much emphasis on which candidate gets in and as if that distracts you from the action you can take in your own personal life when it comes to health care and taking responsibility and getting out there. And we'll talk to uh, uh, Coach Jimmy uh, later in our show about some ways you can take control of that and get physically fit now, whether it's uh, talking with a Randy Nichols and getting financially fit and talking about that and taking control of what you can now. Instead of waiting for what these guys are going to say about health care or Social Security or Medicare or even foreign policy, because guess what? They're in there for four to eight years max. So whatever you you think whatever you want for the next 20 years, the next 30 years, that's not going to be there because someone else is going to come in. And that's why you need to do something that's constant no matter what change is going on out there. So take control of that. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Tuttle Talk. I'm talking with John Allen of Texas Community Insurance and Randy Nichols uh, just about the debates, about what's going on. I did want to say one quick thing about the uh, last debate 
which I thought was uh, very uh, the one part that was hilarious to me because Obama, I think he just took away with it. And there was one clip uh, that he, you know, Romney setting up, and I think it's been played out everywhere, but I just can't help it. It's so good. Romney talks about the Navy being so small and everything. I got so much press, right? We got lower Navy, and we got lower those, and we can't blah, blah. And Obama was like, yeah, we got less bayonets too. So, Danny, if you've got that clip, if you'd roll that. I think Governor Romney maybe uh, hasn't spent enough time looking at how our military works. You, you mentioned the Navy, for example, and that we have fewer ships than we did in 1916. Well, Governor, we also have fewer horses and bayonets because the nature of our military has changed. We have these things called aircraft carriers where planes land on them. We have these ships that go underwater, nuclear submarines. And so the question is not uh, a game of battleship where we're counting ships. It's, it's what are our capabilities? I just thought that that was... That's so hilarious, and it is. It was, I thought he really made Romney. I mean, dude, he if, if it was a boxing match, that was a haymaker. So I thought it was really good, and I like seeing that. And I do like seeing our president, whatever your stance is, I like seeing the president of our country being able to do that. He should be able to do that, He's been, especially on foreign policy, because he's got the advantage there. So I, I do like seeing that. I thought it was a, a, good, a, good, uh, a good statement and uh, good in the boxing match of the show, John, as you say. But I know, John, also, some of the part of the show that you hate that we talk about all the time is the Facebook nonsense. Yeah, I saw somebody post something. And, you know, Facebook is Facebook, and take it for what you will. It's it's just a social venue. But I saw somebody say something to the effect of, she doesn't like Michelle Obama, but she likes her dress, but, gee, you know, she helped pay for the dress. And I'm thinking, you know, how does that serve any purpose, really? Can we just kind of focus, really, on the substantive issues? Aren't we all adults here? I think we got out of eighth grade several years ago, most of us. So, you know, it'd be nice if it was just about more about the national issues, whatever they are. I think that's your problem is you're friending the wrong people on Facebook. Probably. I mean, I've checked your profile <laughs> I, I out. think so. You have a very <laughs> yeah. large amount of eighth graders, yeah, which probably is, you know, you have to learn. Let me, I'll, show you, I'll show you how to work Facebook. <laughs> Thank this you. Is, this is one of your major problems. <laughs> what you, what, you wonder why they keep talking about all of the uh, friend bracelets and yeah. all of those things. This is why. You know, all the pictures of the kids aren't parents showing their kids. They're just the friends. So I'll, I'll help you with that. No, you're right, though. And I'll tell you this, though. As far as uh, Facebook, a lot of people do talk. They have no idea. what I can't even get into those conversations because right. they're just uh, ridiculous and it's a waste of energy. Uh, I do appreciate that you can in this country express those because you can't in a lot of places, right? Yep. I mean, it's a w wealth of opportunity for people to be able to do that. Unfortunately, with it, you get a lot of people just talking out of their butt. But the good news there is that you kind of know where they stand and who knows what. So I get a real good read of who knows really the issues and who doesn't. And get, I like getting a gauge of where my network is at and where we are at as a country for, because of that. I'll tell you this in the marketing game, though. Pfft. The uh, Democrats have had us for years on one key issue, and it's that dang blue tie. You know, blue, IBM, they did all the research. You're like 70% more likely to make a sale if you have a blue, uh, a, specifically a blue, it's, they call it true blue, um, jacket on versus any other color of jacket. That's why IBM has the blue. Same with all kinds of branding and everything. And they always have the blue tie. Red is one of the lowest conversion. In fact, because, you know, it's red lights, it's alarm clocks, it's trouble, it's danger. And yet this is the color the Republican Party chose. I really think they messed up there. They've got to figure out a way to make it like green and blue. Go and calm. That way, you know, you've got green states and blue states. It's all nice. But instead, no, we're the red. We're, you know, it's, it's just not a good... A good color, but that's just my little rant. You're listening to Tuttle Talk. My special guests today are actually uh, Travis Dwayne, a realtor over at Remax, and Dr. Ara Manassi, and he's a broker over at Star Realty. And we will discuss the new rules of real estate with them a little bit later in the show. You can reach us about these discussions, anything about politics, which you guys love calling me and emailing me on uh, about our political comments, which is uh, cracks me up, and I love it. So pre appreciate those. Keep those coming. But you can reach me at 214 736 Nine six nine six, or email me at questions at andytuttle.com. Now, coming up, I'll tell you what happened with rates this week, what the outlook is for the market. We're going to talk with John Allen uh, about a couple of insurance tips that you can take uh, home with you and, and, and help your pocketbook. And we're also going to talk with our financial advisor, Randy Nichols, in our Word on Wealth segment. What are the questions you should be asking when looking at financial uh, security? We'll hear it from the proverbial horse's mouth next. You don't look like a horse, Randy. Stay with us. Thank you. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us.
Why do I need an agent? I'll just go online and get my own insurance. I'll save money if I do it myself, right? Online relationships aren't for everyone. A good agent gets to know a little bit about you and the things that you own so that he or she can get you the right coverage at the right price. And when you have a claim, you should feel good knowing you can call your agent. The same person who helped you get the coverage, the one who knows you, not some online stranger. If you are getting nothing out of your current insurance relationship, call me at 214-736-9696. I'm John Allen at Texas Community Insurance and I can help you. Once again, that's John Allen, 214-736-9696. Andy Tuttle here, host of Tuttle Talk. Yeah, I really am thrilled to get to speak to you every single week and bring the truth about our local real estate market. A lot of the stuff you hear in the news is based on national numbers, and it really doesn't mean much to us here in Dallas. So if you want the inside knowledge about what's going on in our real estate market, that is exactly what I'm here for. So give me a call, 214-736-9696, 214-736-9696. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, you want to refinance or even invest, I can help you make an educated decision about what's going on and what's going to be best for you and your family. It's easy. I will give you the real facts. My team is going to give you the facts, and you're going to decide from there, right? That's how that works. So give me a call. I'm here to help. 214-736-9696 or visit me at andytuttle.com. Why do people prefer to do business with Fidelity National Title? Some people say for the high-level security we offer through our solid financial strength. Some say they trust our history of excellent service, but most say it's our passion for excellence that keeps our customers coming back. Put your trust in the company that stands the test of time and will be here tomorrow. To learn more about Fidelity National Title, visit FidelityDFW.com or call 877-862-9111. Welcome back, Dallas. You are listening to Tuttle Talk on the Real Estate Radio Network. I am your host, Andy Tuttle. You can listen to us on your iHeartRadio app, don't forget. You can download that on your uh, smartphone or your uh, tablet or whatever you have. You can also reach us at 214-736-9696 or become a fan of the show at facebook.com forward slash Tuttle Talk, and you can catch all shows at andytuttle.com. Don't forget, pick up your phone, dial 72727, and put in Andy T. Type in Andy T, A-N-D-Y-T as in Texas, no spaces, to 72727 to enter to win a free iPad. You know, I told you I was going to talk a little bit about what happened with rates this week, and then we'll get in with Randy and John here about uh, the Word on Wealth segment. But real quick, the jobless claims the decreased. So we had a little fewer jobless claims. We had, even though we had 3M and some other companies cause a major, uh, it was like 250 or 220 ba- uh, basis points in the Dow. I can't remember. Randy, do you remember the... The, Not specifically, no. It was like 220 that day. It was down. We were still above 13,000, though, which is too high anyway, in my opinion, uh, right now, based on what real growth that we have. But uh, it is what it is. Either way, um, we have, because of the lower jobless claims, because we were too, we really needed a correction in the bond market anyway, rates have really trickled back up about three eighths of a percent to over the last. A few weeks, over the last couple of weeks, really. And so they're still ridiculously low. Money is so cheap. Mm-hmm. It's in the threes on 30 years. You can get it in the twos on a 15-year loan. I mean, if you're paying cash for a house, please stop. Please. This is the only – you'll never get money this cheap again. It's practically free. If you look about that and you compare it with inflation and you do that, leverage your money. Create arbitrage. Everything's 100% financed. Don't forget that. You either finance it yourself with your own money or you leverage it and make uh, more money than you borrow it. Borrow it three – Make money at 10. You got 7%. That's what banks do. You should do it too. Okay. We'll see what happens in rates over the next uh, a couple of weeks. I'm still long-term on rates. They'll still be low here. Um, uh, good. So take advantage of that uh, now while they're here. John, I know we talk about fun stuff when we talk about insurance. It's what people sit in their cars and wait for is this discussion. No doubt. <laughs> but mm-hmm. uh, so let's get to that without further ado. Mm-hmm. Uh, seriously, uh, I know you always have good insurance tips for us, and I know it's not the most exciting thing, but it is a very important topic to cover because we don't think about it. Absolutely. Yeah, one that uh, one that came up this week that's real quick uh, reminder is uh, we had a case where, uh, and this happens reasonably frequently, case where the original close date was going to be X. It was delayed by almost a month. Uh, and in that delay period, uh, the seller, the buyer rather, figured out there were some unrepaired uh, issues that they had to, to uh, deal with. So the old homeowner then turned and filed a claim on his insurance for the repairs that needed to be made. Now, that, the right thing to do is to fix the house. The kicker, though, is if that claim isn't closed by the time they're ready to close the loan, 
then the new insurance carrier will not write the insurance until it's actually closed. So sometimes what you may want to do, depending on the amount of money and the number of claims in the file and so forth, sometimes what you may want to do is just work that into the agreed price and then take that issue offline. Meaning, let the old guy take care of the claim, but let him pay for it instead of putting it on insurance and delaying closing. It's just the point of the detail hmm. is it's just something. It's a detail you want to check. I'm going to run that by our expert agents. We got later, so Dr. Ara and uh, Travis, get ready. To, to, I want to. I want your thoughts on that and what you think about that. Because I actually, that's not something that's happened to me personally with any of my clients that have had a delay because of that. But I'm sure it happens. So that's interesting that it happens to you, and that is a good point to think about. So I can't wait to get. Uh, our uh, view from the realtor side of what goes on there. So uh, too many claims, not getting closed. I'm just writing this down for later in the show. John, really quick, what's one thing uh, that you would say if you are just on your, well, let me just let me just say this. If you have not done a policy checkup, if you have not done an insurance review lately, just call us, 214 736 Nine six nine six. Let me hook you up with John. I did the. I did it. I was already bundled with my auto, but he saved me. Oh, I forget now. It was over six hundred dollars yeah, a year. It was, a lot. it was. It was a lot. It may have been more than that. And I got better coverage. Go Can ahead, I make bro. one quick comment on that? You know, we talked about the theater of politics. Well, there's theater of insurance too, where people get enamored with the premium and how much can I save and how much can I. And that isn't by itself the issue. You need to look at what your coverage is first and then figure out how the insurance can help you. And then if you can save money doing it, great. But the point of the exercise is to go through and look at my coverage. Am I really covered? And it doesn't have to be exhaustive. It doesn't have to be long and drawn out. You should be able to have that conversation in five to ten minutes. Yeah, 100% agree. Thank you so much. Now I'll get into the Word on Wealth segment with our good friend and managing partner over at Spectrum Financial, Randy Nichols. This segment is brought to you today by Fidelity Title and Ashton Watson over at Fidelity Title, a great group of people. i got to tell you, People don't think how important title is. They don't understand what title does because it's all behind the scenes going to the courthouse and making sure that you have clear title because judgments come up all the time that aren't these people's. But let me tell you, it is so important to get clear title. It is so important to work with a company that is proactive in communicating with the clients and the agents because there are seven companies and about 27 people on average that work on any trans any one transaction. Mm-hmm. So if you're in a real estate transaction, you got to remember that you got to have professionals on all sides. And that's when we love working with Fidelity Title. Thank you so much, Fidelity and Ashton, because she is the one that got us some great connections with some fantastic agents today. Randy, buddy, I know you got some good tips for us this week. Yes, sir, I do. Let's go over the top tips that you should be looking for when you're asking about and looking about financial security. Okay. Uh, and Andy, let me give you an overview on this first. A lot of these on the surface, when you when you hear me lay out the the actual question, you're, our, our, our listeners are going to have a, an actual thought, and they're going to say, oh, that's very obvious. It's the little nuances underneath the question that caused most people the problem. So let me just jump into these. Okay. Let's start with number one, what's important to me? Again, sounds very simple, but before you, 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 uh, uh, you think about what financial products you need, which is what most people do, clarify what's truly important to you first. And that means the people you care about, the aspirations you have, the things you want to protect, and the support you'd like to give others. That's oftentimes an overlooked and forgotten issue. So whether you reflect on the question with your, by yourself or with family members or alongside your financial professional, ask this first because that's going to create the framework for everything else you do. So that's number one. It's a good one. What's important to me? Number two, I love this one. Everyone just thinks about family, spouse, kids first. Number two, who depends on me today but who might depend on me tomorrow? So when you look at the core decision as you go through your decision-making process, what you should do is answer this uh, before you get to the products again. And you're initially going to say spouse and children. They're number one. Those are the obvious dependents. Right. However, there can be others, for example, parents, in-laws, siblings who may be due to age, disability, or other circumstances may be unable to care for themselves. This happens a great deal. It's amazing what's going on out in the world we live in. Uh, so even individuals without a family, uh, without family who have dependents, they're they're covering themselves. And so, since their well-being uh, depends on their own ability to earn an income, they've got to be very, very careful. So, who depends on me today, and who might depend on me tomorrow? That's number two. Let's get to number three. That's really yeah, good. Number three, who's providing for my dependents now? Again, well, I am. I'm working. I'm the wage earner. Well, hold on. There's more to it than that. Does someone in your family provide valuable non-financial support? To those you care about. Uh, think about the stay-at-home parent. They may not support the family with earned income, but the support they do provide is just as valuable as the paycheck. So if a stay-at-home parent were unable to provide that support, think of how expensive that would be 
to hire that help to get those things done. So account for everyone that's, uh, that provides essential financial and non-financial support to your dependents. Little, little tiny things. Yes. That's that's fantastic. Those are great three fantastic tips. And I know you've got a lot more and we're gonna get into those. Good. We're gonna have to make this a, a, a series a little bit, a little bit we're gonna keep Absolutely. going over those. Absolutely. How many other how many tips are there? Like what are the I have ten core tips that okay. I like to work through. Uh, talking about three today is great. Anyone who wants to respond to that of course can can uh yeah, uh, contact us and, and dig a little deeper on each one of those subjects. That's exactly right. So if I was gonna wrap up real quick on those three, it is one, who uh I what's think, important? What's, what's important, important to you? You know, what's the what's the major league issue? That's, That's right. What's important to me? Who depends on me now and may depend on me later? And may depend on me later. And then the third one is who who is providing for my dependents now? And it's not just me because I'm the only wage earner in my family. It's also those that may be providing other support that is considered non-financial. Uh, you know, I know that there's so many other things and distractions and TV and football and sports and all kinds of fun stuff, social. But you got to. Pay attention to this. You know, for this building, it takes two years of planning, and then it takes six months, 12 months. Even the building you're in, the car you're in right now, look at all the planning it takes and then the building to put that together. How much time have you spent planning your life, planning your finances? How much more important is that than the building you're in or the car you're in? Take the time to do it. Call us at 214-736-9696. Start your discussion with Randy today about these. It's a free consultation. He will just talk to you about what's going on in your life, how to set up the court. You got to do it. Please do it. Your family deserves it. You deserve it. You got to take care of it. So please do. Thank you so much, Randy, for being here and doing that as always. You bet, buddy. You are listening to Tuttle Talk on the Real Estate Radio Network. You can become a fan of the show at facebook.com forward slash Tuttle Talk. And don't forget to text Andy T to 72727 to enter to win a free iPad. Coming up, We're going to have a candid discussion with two realtors with two different perspectives and two completely different stories. And they'll tell you why you're not stuck in your home. And I'll tell you our real steal of the week next. Randall Nichols is a registered representative of and offers securities, investment advisory, and financial planning services through MML Investor Services, LLC. Member SIPC, 5080 Spectrum Drive, Suite 902W, Addison, Texas, 75001. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Are you a grandparent? Do you want to make sure the assets you leave to your children make it down to your precious grandchildren and your children don't lose them to divorce, creditors, or lawsuits? I can help you make sure your assets make it down to those precious grandchildren. You can reach me at 214-736-9696, 214-736-9696. I'm Lee Hilton, and I help you protect the two most important things in your life, everyone you love and everything you own. Real Estate Radio's Tuttle Talk in Dallas is hosted by local real estate and finance expert Andy Tuttle. The purpose of the show is to help consumers understand what's really going on in our local real estate market. We're teaching you the why and the how-to, so you'll always be one step ahead of everyone else. Whether you need to sell your home for top dollar, refinance and save money, or even buy a bargain in DFW, Andy Tuttle can help. Call Andy directly at 214-736-9696. That's 214 214- 736-9696. Take advantage of speaking with Andy anytime you're entering a real estate transaction. Having someone who can answer all your questions that truly cares about you and your family's best interest is priceless. Call Andy today and you'll be glad you did. 214-736-9696. That's 214-736-9696. Or you can visit andytuttle.com for more info. Do you have an insurance strategy? When is the last time you had a policy checkup? Do these sound like odd questions to you? Well, they might if you are used to hearing insurance agents talk only about all the money they can save you on your insurance. Saving money is important, but with insurance, saving money on premium may cost you big dollars on claims. Why? Because not all policies are created equally. So. 
If you come across someone who does not have a clear insurance strategy or you yourself don't, they probably need an insurance review or a policy checkup. And John Allen with Texas Community Insurance can help. He is trusted in the industry and he has helped me and many of my clients over the years save tons of money and get properly insured. Call 214-736-9696. That's 214-736-9696. And we will personally introduce you to John Allen to get that review, get that checkup and take care of your needs. You can also reach out on facebook.com forward slash Tuttle Talk. Every Sunday morning from 8A to 10A, get the best in golf. News, interviews with golf's great players, game improvement lessons, plus your chance to win great rounds of golf. It's the Golfer's Home with Stephen Gribben, only on 1190 AM. And we're back. Thank you, Dallas. I don't know why you don't think that's not going to happen every week. It is. You're listening to Tuttle Talk on the Real Estate Radio Network. That was a good one. I am your host, Andy Tuttle. Listen on your iHeartRadio app, guys. You can also call me at 214-736-9696. Uh, anything that's already talked about on the show, anything coming up, and you can catch all shows at andytuttle.com. I'm talking with two great agents today. Excuse me, I try to do that almost every week. Talk to good quality agents in the DFW Metroplex. Today is no different. Travis Dwayne, who is a realtor over at Remax. He's been in the business for seven years. He's in the Flower Mound and surrounding areas. And uh, he's actually worked with uh, some of the top real estate teams in his time and is a big believer in the team concept. And he's worked on big teams because he understands you got to go through a lot of uh, transaction, work with a lot of clients to understand and accelerate your learning. And it gives him a unique view of the market and the whole process, uh, the whole home purchasing process. So, Travis, thanks for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Oh, you sound great on the old mic there. Nice work, Travis. Thanks again. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Ara Manassian is a broker at Star Realty. Now, he's been in the real estate uh, business for 12 years, but he started out as an investor, which gives him another unique perspective. So I like having both of you here. I think he speaks three languages. And right. Yeah, that's right. And he's actually a doctor of real estate. No, I'm kidding. But he is a doctor. <laughs> and we're really glad you're here, Dr. Thank you. Yeah, you're an MD. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ara, for being here. Okay, Travis, now I know you You have a daughter? I do, an eight-year-old, yeah. You have an eight-year-old. A girl, right? Yeah, she's a hot mess. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. awesome. How is it How is it having a little eight-year-old running around? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, we she went to a, one of those little plays. They do these plays every year for the grades, you know, and uh, uh, we just did this one. She had a speaking part, so she was pretty yes. nervous about it. And uh, uh, like me, she's... She, not real shy. Uh, so this girl, she's supposed to have another speaking part, and uh, she clams up at the last second, and she goes running off stage, throws my daughter the microphone. My daughter picks up the microphone, does the girl's part like it was no big deal. Nice. Yeah, that's my daughter. That is good. <laughs> Did you tell her that her, her dad is now going to have a speaking part on a radio show? I told her I was coming. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. She's like, don't screw it up, Dad. <laughs> Don't drop the mic. Don't drop the mic. Can I even say that on the (laughs) mic? Yes, you can. You can. (laughs) Okay. You can also say that you created uh, something else that's not real estate related, but I love so much here, are sunglasses with a uh, bottle opener on them. Tell us what prompted you. I'm going to put these on, by the way. What prompted you to make (laughs) They look pretty sharp on you. Mm, Thanks. Take a picture of this. Go ahead. What prompted you to create this? So somebody tossed me a beer in the pool one day, and uh, you know there were some flip flops that have the opener on them. Uh, Reef makes them, and mm. it's been it's been big. They've uh, <laughs> they've done really well with it for you know going on I don't know eight nine years. So <laughs> anyway, somebody tossed me a beer in the pool, and I had some sunglasses on. Thought, hey, this would be a great idea, and here <laughs> there we have goes. it. The this Genesis. is our first year of production. And you've sold how many of these? Uh, we're going on pushing almost a million units sold wow. now. That, I'm telling you, this is great Shark Tank material. <laughs> I like I like the idea better of uh, something from your head opening something that goes to your mouth rather than something from your foot going towards something that that's an MD speaking right there <laughs> you know it, it doesn't you know. take a doctor to figure that out <laughs> <laughs> but it helps to have the credibility you've heard it here uh, if you're just tuned in you're listening to Tuttle Talk we're talking to Dr. Ara Manassian and to Travis Dwayne two realtors really in the Northwest Corridor area right both of you kind of serve up in Flower the, Mound area Flower yeah. Mound and I guess we also Frisco and Plano South Lake all that area you know we cover whatever area our clients need <laughs> We're yeah. working the same hood, brothers from a different mother. Uh, I, love, <laughs> I love that. I, love, I say that all the time. People go, why Why do you say this? Well, one of the purposes of this show is to give home buyers and home sellers 
tips about uh, purchasing or uh, or selling their home. And so, Travis, I have a question for you first off is, you know, in, in talking about this, you believe there are four real main reasons that a home will or will not sell. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, price, condition, location, and marketing. It, uh, it's not rocket science. And, and, you know, it's funny right now, our market, we're down, what, 35%? In inventory, so there's nothing on the marketplace, and it yeah. seems like the things that are out there are either overpriced or they're in a bad location or something's wrong with the condition or, or they're just not being marketed. I mean, there's roughly 2,500 homes on the market that don't even have pictures. Hmm. I mean, I it's crazy. That. that is crazy. Why would you – I don't even understand. How can you market in this in this market without pictures? Realtors do it every day. It's it's funny. It uh, you know there's there's a lot of uh, part time agents out there. There's a lot of people that don't yeah. do this full time. Don't take it seriously and don't have a working camera. And this is true. Yeah, or, or just can't work the camera they have. <laughs> Doctor, are, is that a bad sign? If your agent doesn't have a working camera, you should probably run to yeah, somewhere. Reconsider. <laughs> Maybe make them show you the camera before you sign the listing agreement. <laughs> yeah, this that's is a true. good idea. <laughs> in fact, I'm gonna start asking. I'm gonna put that in my listing agreement from now on. Yeah, that's a good idea. I have a working camera. So, uh, Doctor Ara, on your your side of things, I know you have a little different perspective, too, because your roots come from investing. What got you into that? Well, you know, um, I was big into the stock market for a while, and uh, as I'm sure everyone's faced, you know, you have somebody else managing your money, basically. You pick where you want it to go, but it comes down to the CEO making decisions, and if they commit fraud, well, guess what? That stock's not going to do very well, and it's going to tank before you have a chance to react or do anything about it or it might get locked up. And I got tired of other people losing my money. Right. I figured if I'm going to do something with my money and it's going to get lost, I'd rather it be my fault than because somebody did something fraudulent. So I thought, what do I have control of? And there's nothing you control more than your own domain, your own land. It's yours. No one can mess with you. That's very, it's very smart. Like it's, what do they call it? For, I've called Master it this Master of your own domain. Yeah, that's right. And you know, <laughs> house is kind of like a, you know, you could say this, a 401k with a driveway. I've heard that said before. It's your own retirement plan. And I know you exactly. have a plan to, to own a, a lot of properties yourself. Yeah, my goal is 100 houses uh, before I retire. Very smart. And have you, that's, now that you've got a secure retirement there and it's diversified. Now it's all in real estate, but different homes, different locations, exactly. you are able to manage that and make that work. So you for sellers bring a different perspective because of, I think, that background to sellers when they can't sell their home. What other options do sellers have in your Well, it's not necessarily you can't. You might not want to sell, too. Good point. You know, you might consider other options than selling a home, uh, especially in a market like this, where some people buy into the misinformation that it might be hard to buy a house, because I believe that is misinformation. If you have all your documents, you can get a mortgage, you can get your house. Um, but a lot of people actually believe that, and so they turn to renting. And so that's made this great rental market that we've got. Well, for those who are willing to uh, look into that, you know, you, you've got a couple options of how you can do it, but you can own your rental. You know, you can turn your home into a rental, which not only helps you make more money, but is uh, setting yourself up for uh, a good retirement plan. It's setting you up for the next house that you buy. Because if you've got your current house rented, that that takes those numbers off the books. I mean, there's a way to do it. you got to talk to a smart mortgage person to help you along right. the way and a good realtor to help you along the way. 100%. you got to have the whole team there because, like we said, there's so many people that work on it. And I love that you say that because you can. You do have to do a little more paperwork. But if you do it, it's worth it. Get into a home. There's no reason that you can't. You know, I want to go real quick to what John Allen asked earlier or t talked about our insurance guy about too many claims. Uh, did you guys, did that, has that happened to you before? Oh, yeah. It's something that always comes up. Absolutely. So, Travis, what do you think about that? Should you, should they do that off offline and just say pay for it? Or what do you recommend when that happens? But sometimes they get stuck and they have to. Otherwise, yeah. they're going to pay for it during the negotiation process with the buyer or, right. or you know, usually it's the buyer. It's just like the the lesser of two. If something's going to happen, sometimes you just have no choice. You just got to know that and prepare your buyer for that. Sure. Right. Well, it also comes down to us as realtors planning ahead, uh, looking into those things. If we find an issue, we got to attack it head on and say, hey, look, the roof needs to be replaced. You need to make claim. You need to do it fast. You, you also, that's another thing that makes it real important to have a good insurance agent because a good insurance agent can push those deals along a little bit faster. I mean, it takes time. Right. But if he's got the time to get it done, 
he can work for you and get it done in time. What I hear with that is, and it's so smart that you that you guys have that kind of proactive approach. Yes, if you're getting with an agent that doesn't know what they're doing, then guess what? You're not going to find out about it until the buyer comes and makes an offer on the property. But if you're if you're a good agent, then you're going to tell them that up front. It's like why put why do this? You know this is going to happen. Now mm-hmm. you got an extra month or whatever, you get it done, and then it's not an issue. That is a very huge point. Now let's move this conversation to buyers because I we want to do want to go over some tips for them as well. And if you're just tuning in, we are talking to uh, Dr. Ara and Travis, both uh, great realtors here in the DFW Metroplex. If you want to get in touch with either of them, please call us, 214-736-9696. I want to bring pros to you every week that you can trust and you can trust to work with on whether you're selling or buying, or I know even looking for a lease in this market. Sometimes uh, we can connect you with good people like that. 214-736-9696. Travis, what are some tips for some buyers to make good informed dis- or to, to make good decisions when they're buying a house? Well, I think it's interesting. Um, now that our market is recovering, since it's been recovering for the last year, I, in my opinion, mm-hmm. um, that now buyers are making emotional decisions again. And they, they weren't doing that the last few years. They were just buying on price. And right. that was the primary objective to what they picked was price. Uh, but now they're out there and there's, you know, there's still a limited amount of inventory, but but buyers are out in the, the works again. And it's becoming a seller's market again, I think. And, uh, you know, so now buyers are starting to buy on emotion again. And I think it's important that they realize that uh, they need to make informed decisions. They need to look at numbers still. They need to, right. uh, you know, buy something not not based on, on the condition or, or their reaction for the house, but see where it's priced, see what's happening in their local market, see how far their shopping centers are from them. I mean... All these things come into play, and, and it's important for them to make good decisions. That's good. No, that's good tips. Artie, you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, you know, you can you can get a little bit of smoke screen, and, and uh, you know, that's, that's another point. You know, your agent's going to be looking out for you. Listen to your agent. You know, they're going to tell you, hey, yeah, it's a nice-looking house. Yeah, it, it does have the color wall that you wanted, but that can change. <laughs> the, the numbers – have to make sense. It, it has to make sense for the area. You don't want to buy yourself into something that's going to be problematic. That's why you have the inspections. That's why you have everything taken a look at. You don't want to fall in love with a loser. So, right. you know, it's good to love your house, but make sure that you are looking at the numbers. I mean, it's it's great advice. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. And I know also you have a you also take that approach and more of a holistic approach with your clients. It's like you say, don't love a loser and don't don't love something that you can't afford. Right. I mean, you, you know how you live. I mean, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. If you like to take vacations, go out to dinner every night and and uh, see a lot of movies at the theater, that's awesome for you. If that's what you're going to spend your money on, you put that number aside and say, okay, well, I qualify for this much, but I really need a lower mortgage so that I can have that lifestyle. Right. You know, you don't want to get yourself into, into a position where you bought this house that you really love. But now you can't go out, so you start to hate the house. Right. You don't want to be in that kind of scenario. So look at what really works for you, what your life is about, You know what's important to you in life. Um, make the house fit. That's very good. We always say this, you know, hey, we can approve you, pre-approve you for, a, let's say it's $300,000 home just like everybody else. But based on your lifestyle, based on your lack of reserves or your whatever, your reserves, your emergency funds, what you have in life insurance, all those factors, how you live, we suggest that you, we recommend 250 you know, and sometimes that happens because you got to. We want you to be in the home and enjoy it, not be house rich and cash poor. Mm-hmm. That's such a dangerous uh, thing. Now, I want to get real quick here in our uh, a couple of minutes left that we have. That to our every week, want to bring you this a real steal of the week. And Doctor R, you have that for us, don't you? Yes, we got a listing in Lantana, which, as you mentioned, location is excellent. Uh, it's right there near the shops of Highland Village. It's eighty six eighty one Weston. Uh, we've got it listed at two seventy four nine, which is a really nice price. We reduced it recently. Thirty one hundred square foot house, five space. bedroom, three bath. Um, if you know Lantana, there are a lot of amenities you can really enjoy. There's so much growth in that area. Take take it. Take a look at it. I love that. That's good. Thank you. That is 274, 3,100 square feet in Lantana. That is a fantastic steal of the week. Thank you so much for bringing it. If you want to get a hold of that listing, call us at 214-736-9696. And Travis, one final question for you. I know a lot of people think that, and really for both of you, very quickly, I know that a lot of realtors think they're competition for each other, but you guys don't see it that way, do you? No, we don't at all. In fact, we were talking about this earlier, and that uh, it's interesting that we come from completely different backgrounds. <laughs> the doctor versus Travis. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's not versus. It's not. Versus. You know, it's, it's a common goal in the end. And and you know, one thing we were talking about is is from a seller or a buyer's agent perspective, when you get an offer and it's just completely absurd, you know, one way or the other, it's finding the common ground because at the end of the day, the the buyer's interested, the seller's interested, and it's you know what the seller's willing to part for, what the buyer's willing to come up to, and that's right. You know, if it makes sense at the end of the day, sometimes the buyer and seller can't figure that out because they have too much in motion involved and they need our help. They need us to guide them and, and to come together. And, you know, granted, we may be it's completely all, different, but, but we it, might start off a little bit different, you know, and not every agent can serve every client. And so it's, it's good that there's a good uh, variety of us. There's a good that we represent different companies. Um, the, the key you're going to look for is that the agents understand each other, understand what needs to be done make it a win-win situation for everyone that's exactly right and i'm glad you got to have a team guys you hear it you hear it here don't it's not a competition don't let them battle this is great connections work with realtors that understand that that want to be a team player it's all about you in this and i don't i don't think it's all about you and everything in life but it is all about you when it comes to home ownership you're the reason we're here it's the reason we all have jobs is to take care of you make sure you deal with someone that understands that and can make it a memorable and enjoyable experience for you guys great information thank you both so much for being here thank you thank you Okay, you know, we're now it's time for the Coach's Corner with Coach Jimmy Nelson. Every week, I want to bring you guys some important facts. We always talk about financial fitness, financial health. We talk about the real estate market and what's going on, and it's so important. Benjamin Franklin says, you know, if your health is better, everything else is better. If your health is good, everything else is better. And that's why we have Coach Jimmy on here every week. Jimmy, thanks so much for being with us. Always a pleasure, Andy. Thank you for having me. Uh, you, you bet, buddy. Every uh, every week, glad to do it. Hey, you've helped me lose 17 pounds doing your stuff, so I appreciate what you do for us and what you do for all your thousands of uh, fans on uh, Facebook that you help every single day. So what is your tip of the week this week? Today we're talking about motivation, and I hear about it every day, Andy, that people tell me, Jimmy, I want to lose weight. I want to get active. I want to eat better if I was only motivated. And that always used to confuse me because it was – the act of motivation is, is a reason to act in a certain way. So what I have for your listeners are three simple steps to get motivated to exercise, right? So three simple steps to get motivated to exercise, and we're going to go right through them real quick. Number one— Wait, i got to take notes. Stop. Hold on, i got to take notes. Okay, you're taking notes. You got the pad out? I got it. I'm ready. Okay, okay. Number one for your motivation to exercise is you need to identify your specific why. So a lot of times people say, well, I just want to lose weight or I just want to tone up. And that's a great place to start. But guys, listen to me. If nothing is dynamic until it's specific. So we need to get some very specific goals. If you want to lose 20 pounds, why do you want to lose those 20 pounds? Is it so you have more energy to spend more time with your kids? Is it so you have more confidence to maybe get back out in the dating scene? If you can put a why next to the I want to lose 25 pounds, the more specific you can get with that, the better your chances are that you're going to get started. Number two, you still taking notes? You got number two I'm down? I'm taking notes, but first I want to say, you know, just real quick, you guys, this is this these tips, you want to listen to these because this is from a guy who lost 100 pounds. Jimmy lost 100 pounds with these exact same tips and following this philosophy. So this is great stuff. I didn't, uh, I got specific, and that's why I'm losing weight, and I love that. And mine is so I can, you know, uh, look good for the lady, for my wife. You know what I mean? I want to do that, and because I also want to be healthy and not and fit into my nice shirt, which I'm actually, it's a little tight today. I got to be honest. I got to. I still got to work on this. So give me the next two tips so we okay, can uh, figure two, out. Okay, number two, share your goal with someone. This is something Andy and I have actually done on a personal basis. Share that goal with someone. Now, some, for some of you, this can be a really intimidating step, especially for us guys. It's not real easy for us to share with another buddy, hey, dude, okay, I'm going to try to lose this beer gut, and I want to try to do these things. But be picky with who you share your goal with. You want somebody that's going to be supportive. You want somebody that's going to – hold you to what you said you're going to do, and somebody that's going to, going to build you up, speak some life into you and say, man, you can do this. It's even better if you find somebody that wants to jump in it with you because support is such a key into getting active. Maybe that's finding a buddy at work that will work out with you uh, at your lunch break or after work or before work. But having that support is key. So that's number two. Great stuff. Okay, number three, take action when things aren't perfect. You heard Andy say before that I've lost over 100 pounds. Now, guys, I hate to break it to you. I'm going to tell you a little secret. This is just between me and you. Don't tell anybody else. But life will never stop so you can finally get started on that exercise program. Things aren't going to stop. Your life's not going to get any less crazy. 
everything's not going to go on hold. The bill collectors aren't going to stop or the meetings aren't going to come in. You've just got to start in your imperfect world right now and try to find little ways to get started now. Maybe it is that five-minute walk. Maybe it's brown bagging the lunch to work so you're not uh, uh, tempted by the pizza party or the birthday party there at the job. So just take action right where you are. It may not be perfect. You may know hey, I have these Christmas parties and holiday parties coming up soon, so I'll wait till after all of those. No, 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 no. Start now and just work your way through all those kind of pitfall things that probably are going to happen to all of us. So those are your three steps, guys. Identify your specific why, share your goal with somebody, and take action when things aren't perfect. I love that. You know, one of the last part, you reminded me of a Zig Ziglar quote that says, you don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start to be great. And that's the biggest thing. It's the little decisions that make such a big difference over time. So don't be discouraged. What do they say? How, how do you eat the 800 pound elephant or whatever? You one bite at a time? One bite at a time. You've got to take that first bite, no matter how small a nibble that is. You've got to take the action and take that first bite. Well, speaking of nibbles, Jimmy, wait a second. Speaking of bites, speaking of small bites, small nibbles, I have been begging you to do something so that my listeners can take advantage and get started on this and get get going in something with a no barrier of entry opportunity. So do you have something for us? Yes, you continue to ask. And so <laughs> just for your listeners, I thought the Tuttle Talk community. Come on, make it needs, good, man. Make it good. Needs of the sweet. So we have something fantastic. So we know no matter how much you're trying to work on eating really healthy, all of us have holes in our nutrition some of us bigger holes than others. So what I've done is we have our top-of-the-line, best-selling Activate Multivitamin that's going to help people's bone strength, immunity, uh, help them with their aging, with antioxidants, uh, regulate their calcium, their blood sugar levels. It's top-of-the-line. Uh, your multivitamins out there, there are different ranks and files. This isn't the, the cheap multivitamin that you're going to find maybe at your, your convenience store. This stuff's top-of-the-line, and it's one of our best sellers. But for you and your listeners, we're giving it to them for free. All they got to do is pay four ninety five shipping and handling, and they get 30 days worth of this to, to kind of plug in those holes that they may have because of, some, you know, some places in our nutrition where we're not going to eat perfect all the time. Well, so man, for your I, listeners, man. Well, buddy, that's huge. Thank you so much. Wait a second, because I pay uh, like thirty bucks or something a month for my pills, so I can get that for. Uh, I don't even. I don't even get these, which I should. I'm going to get them now. That's free, and it's four ninety. I'm doing that. Put that on my site. Yeah. Would you put it on the fan page? Absolutely. They can go to your fan page, the Teletalk uh, Facebook fan page. Okay. We're going to put the link right there, and everybody can have access to it. Perfect, man. Thank you so much. That is awesome. Guys, take advantage of that. That's free. I'm going to do it. That is so easy. you got to do it. Take the start. Take vitamins. i got to tell you, it really does help with the sicknesses, especially this time of year. you got to get your immune system up and higher and, and start the process, and this is a great entry to doing that. So thank you so much, Jimmy, for being here and for offering that for us. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, brother. Have a great day. Take care. Okay, you're listening to Tuttle Talk. I hope you've enjoyed the hour. We are out of time as usual with me going over. Danny's going to kill me. Production director is going to kill me. If you want to get a hold of us, call me at 214-736-9696 or email me at questions at andytuttle.com. We'll get you connected with any of the guests uh, on this show today. Don't forget to get your boots on. We wear them the first Friday of every month. Support our troops. Support the military. Go to bootcampaign.com. And don't forget to go to yourmortgagereview.com. Take a few minutes. Find out if you can save some money on a no-cost loan. They're out there. Yourmortgagereview.com. Take the time. It's a great investment. You'll be glad you did. And don't forget, text Andy T to 72727 to enter to win an iPad. I'd like to dis- If you'd like to discuss anything related to the show again, you contact me directly and you can join us next week for more great real estate news. I'm actually going to have an author about how not to, how to quit your job. What? That's right. I quit. Working for you is not working for me. The author of that book is going to be here next week. We're going to talk a very interesting uh, book. You'll want to hear that. I'd like to thank Randy Nichols, John Allen, Dr. Ara, Travis for being here. And as always, thank you, Danny Miles, our production director, and the entire family here at KFXR. That's it for today. Race Talk is coming up next. This is Andy Tuttle for the Real Estate Radio Network. Thank you for listening to Tuttle Talk, where we're making financial intelligence a priority in our community. Talk to you next Saturday. Have a great weekend.